Hey guys, Emily here. I just wanted to stop in real quick and say that we want to make sure to give you the whole story here, all of the truth and facts. And the truth is, a lot of people in history were racist or at the very, very least benefited from racist institutions and societal norms. Later you'll hear us mention that one of the women we're discussing, El Zeta Clover, was briefly a supervisor for an Indian mission school in Texas. In case you didn't know, Indian mission schools, not the coolest of places, church-run and sometimes federally supported, discouraged traditional religion and cultural practices, not great. We are in no way condoning El Zeta's association with places like this. All we can do is lay out the facts and hope that if she were around today, she would have made better choices and supported those in marginalized communities instead of trying to assimilate them. It is possible to celebrate a person's accomplishments and admonish them for their problematic behavior. All right, that's enough for now. Thanks for listening and on with the show. Science and technology. Steampunks, my name's Emily Shock. And I'm Zachary Shock, your co-host, husband, and number one fan of Emily. Oh my gosh, that's my name. Is nope. that every time? Every time. Okay, good. I want to apologize in advance. I'm a little sniffly today. There's a lot of pollen in the air. Like at least three. It's more like eight. It's a lot of pollen. It's a lot. <laughs> uh but wait a minute, where does pollen come from? Well, you know, lots of green things. What, what are, what, who studies green things? Americans, uh, Russians, <laughs> Germans. God. It, those ones, right? Uh-huh, just those ones. Oh my god, I wanted you to say botanists. <laughs> I think you know that. Yeah. I think you know that deep down. Deep down in my bones. <laughs> Anyway, so today we're going to talk about a couple of botanists that I think are pretty cool. Uh, their names are Elzada Clover and Lois Jotter. Cool. Super cool. And not only were they botanists, but they are known as the first women to successfully raft the Colorado River. That's a pretty good river. <laughs> For rafting. That's a good river. I like that river. I mean, it's... <laughs> Like white water rafting. <laughs> yeah, which is super fun now, but, you know, in the 30s when everyone else of your gender who tried it died. Yeah. A little intimidating. A little bit. Anyway, let's learn about Elzada and Lois a little bit, shall we? Let's do it. All right, first off, Elzada Yurseba Clover. She was born on September 12th, 1897 in Auburn, Nebraska. Okay. She was one of... Many children, as people back then often were. Mm. <laughs> so she grew up and started her career as a teacher. Okay. Uh, a very common job for young women of mm. the time. She uh, taught and administered at public schools in Nebraska and eventually moved to Texas. All right. And where she did supervise an Indian mission school. Yeah, that's not good. Don't do that. We're going to celebrate her accomplishments while also condemning some bad things she did. Uh, she eventually started going to, to college. She went to Peru State Normal School, graduated in 1930. Normal school? I Normal school. Heard um, you've heard it before because we went to Bowling Green. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Bowling Green mm -hmm. State University used to be Bowling Green Normal College. And that's just the word for universities that would teach teachers. I was just like, the nomenclature. Okay. And then eventually they added more programs on, but Peru State is also a university now too. And so since they weren't just teaching teachers, they, they changed their name. But yeah, that's what a normal school is. Totally normal. So normal. The normalest place to be. Which I'm sure it was. It was the 1930s. Yeah, everyone were <laughs> teachers back then. 
Anywho, after she graduated Peru State, uh, she moved to Ann Arbor in 1931 okay. to start her graduate work at the University of Michigan. So got her master's in 1932 there and immediately started on her doctorate. Mm-hmm. 1935 with a thesis of vegetation of the lower Rio Grande. Ooh. And immediately after that, she became instructor in botany and started as the assistant curator of the botanical gardens there. Ooh. She started a lot of their uh, cactus and succulent areas. Okay. Um, most of the, if you go today, most of the collection there started with her. Wow. Our descendants, or possibly even the same cacti as she planted. Other desert vegetation, too, and that, seriously, that collection looks really cool, and we should go see it in person. Yes. Um, and in building this collection, she went a bunch of places to go get them, all over the southwestern United States, in particular, because that's where your cacti are going to grow. Yeah. And in one of her trips, she ended up at the Mexican Hat Lodge in Utah. It was called that. There was a rock, mm. and like a sombrero. So it's Mexican hat. Awesome. <laughs> and while she was staying at the Mexican Hat Lodge, she met Norm Nevels. He was the son of the couple that owned the lodge, and he had rafted the Colorado before. So he knew. Actually, I don't know if he rafted Colorado. <gasps> he rafted a bunch before. <laughs> And so he knew the dangers and how to do stuff and yada yada. Mm. So they got to talking about, man, I bet there are a bunch of crazy cacti in the Grand Canyon. Okay. So she started brainstorming, like, how am I going to get down there? She's like, oh, I can get some mules and we'll just like go do clippity clippity clop. Oh, look, a cactus. Run down there, get it. Run back up to the mule, clippity clop. And he was like, that would take forever. <laughs> And it's a very bad idea. <laughs> yeah. All right, get this plant, this so plant. So it was like, you're going to get less specimens and take months, and it's just not going to be good. How about you go by the river? And she was into it. She knew. Everyone knew the story of the of the woman who drowned. It was actually a woman and her fiancé, mm-hmm. and they were honeymooning, and got lost. I guess we don't know if they drowned, but they drowned. Yeah. And so, so while a couple of men had successfully done it at this point, uh, women, it was still a new territory. Okay. So super excited for this new expedition they were going to go on. She went back to the U of M and grabbed some grad students to take with her. Okay. One of them, his name was Gene Atkinson, who was actually a zoology major, but he was doing an internship at the botanical gardens for whatever reason. Interesting. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe to learn what to feed them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and the other student was Lois Jotter. Hey, I heard that name before. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I said it like, what, eight and a half minutes ago. <laughs> so Lois Jotter was born March 11th, 1914 in Weaverville, California. Okay. Uh, she was at the University of Michigan at the time. She was working towards her master's and eventual doctorate in botany. Um, and I'm, I'm, I don't have as much info on Lois because most people consider Elzada to be the first woman that successfully rafted the Colorado. Colorado. Mm-hmm. But the thing is, Lois was also there. <laughs> literally sitting next to her. Are you sure that Elzada wasn't in front of the raft and she was in second? Maybe. And <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> Elzada crossed the finish line first, so. But no, I want to talk about her. And another reason I want to talk about her is when I was doing research for this, I came across a really cool video series that they did an interview of her and a bunch of other people that have done the Colorado. Mm-hmm. And at this point, she was... She was 80s, 90s, and she she is just charming. I'm going to link it, this video, in the, in the episode description, because she is a hoot and a half, <laughs> and I love her, and I wanted to talk about her. So, she was working towards her doctorate in botany when El, El Zeta came and asked her to join her on this voyage. And in particular, she wanted a woman to come with her for propriety's sake. Like... I don't know, in 1930s logic, two women on an expedition. Well, yeah, you don't want to go alone, that'd be... <sighs> I hate the 30s. 
Anyway, there's going to be more of those moments, some grinding moments in a bit. Um, but on top of that, she was also outdoorsy and athletic. She had been a camp counselor for mm-hmm. a long time and knew how to row, so that was a huge plus, too. Yeah, I hope one person would. <laughs> she was also super tall. Like, she was taller than some of the guys. <laughs> oh, and in that YouTube video, she called her Elsie, which Aww. is precious. I'm going to use that because it's easier to say than Elzada. <laughs> you don't know her like that. You know what? Fair point, but I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Taking a quick breath to talk about our friends at Chubby Plant People on Instagram. Elzada and Lois both love cacti and succulents, and cacti and succulents are what chubby plant people do best. If you want to learn more about the care, history, and benefit of succulents in your life, please check them out at Chubby Plant People on Instagram. Thanks! Okay, so June 14th, 1938, U of M people get there, and there they find Norm and three. Norm! And then they find Norm and the three boats that he built. He, he added some modifications and stuff that he thought would help the voyage go smoother. And the three boats were the Wen, which were his father's initials, W-E-N. Uh, the Where Mexican. and the Y. Yep, you got it. <laughs> nope, <laughs> they were the Wen, the Mexican hat, and the botany. So the people on this voyage were Norm, Alzada, Lois, and Jean. And there were a couple other guys. There was Bill Gibson. He was a commercial artist who wanted to further his photography career by coming along on the voyage and taking pictures. And you can totally tell when you look at the scientific specimen pictures from this voyage. They're all at, like, angles and, like, real artsy. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) But so he, he was he was trying to further his photography career. And then there was also Don Harris. He was a United States Geological Survey engineer, good friend of Norm's. And he helped build the boats in exchange to being able to take one home with him once it was all over. So yeah, as I said earlier, the, the last woman to try it, her name was Bessie Hyde and her husband, by the way. It was 10 years before this and, and they had drowned. Mm. And so uh, El Zeta, it was quoted as saying that just because the only other woman who ever attempted this trip was drowned is no reason women have any more to fear than men. Yeah. So, boom. I mean, her husband also drowned in it. I know. Let's, so. It's fine. <laughs> so 9 a.m. the next morning, June 20th, they set off down the Green River, which is a smaller, easier river that feeds into the Colorado. Okay. So that's where they began. Uh, and there's a lot of detail to this trip mm. because it was it was several weeks long and, you know, they recorded yeah. a lot of it. It was a super momentous thing. Mm. So I'm not going to talk about everything. Uh, there will be more links in the episode description if you want to read more, which I suggest <laughs> because it's pretty cool. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> you know, some of the, the biggest things, the first few days were super easy. The Green River is uneventful, easy to cross. So, the one thing I do want to mention is that Elzada and Lois, of course, did all the cooking. (laughs) So, they did all the cooking, they made sure they wore makeup every day, and they made sure to change inside of their sleeping bags, which is hard to do, to make sure that the men couldn't see. Eventually, they got real lax on all of these things. Uh, They did keep doing all of the cooking, though, Mm -hmm. because the men were hopeless at it. (laughs) <laughs> this is from one of her diary, Elzada's diary entries mm. from the trip. The boys wanted lunch, although it was not 12 o'clock. And, okay, to start, they were actively doing botany stuff, mm. is the thing. So they are working on the reason that they are on the river. Yeah. And she writes, the boys wanted lunch, although it was not 12 o'clock. Finally, I suggested that they get out the lunch things. <laughs> <laughs> the four of them managed to round up bag number two. But they were sitting bug-eyed and expectant under a rock when we came to them. <laughs> they had not mixed the malt or anything. We have spoiled them completely. Uh, which is funny, but it's not. Oh. Like, you're survivalists. What do you do when you don't go on trips with ladies? Just eat dirt? So while they did keep doing all of the cooking, 
the other stuff like wearing makeup every day and changing inside their sleeping bags they they eventually got over that they did make sure to change away from the men and like mm -hmm. one of them kept watch but they weren't all <laughs> inside the bag because great visual <laughs> super good for podcasts great <laughs> because it's just it's a waste of time at that point you got you got stuff to do while you're down there yeah so they reached the colorado and it was way crazy bigger <laughs> <laughs> and like super full of rapids and as prepared as they were the mexican hat the, the boat went away it got off just well, nobody well they weren't in it they were they were lining it into the river mm -hmm. and it got <laughs> carried away came loose uh... into the river so don and lois got in the way in one of the other boats to go after it Mm -hmm. In which they eventually got there. They got it. They got it on shore. And Lois started setting up the new camp while Don went back to tell everyone that it was okay. The thing is, it took a long time for him to get back. So they were like, well, Lois and Don are dead. <laughs> cool, this is great. And also all our stuff was in that canoe. <laughs> all the specimens. <laughs> well, no, it was like the first day. They hadn't had yeah. specimens yet. They literally thought they got the first day to the Colorado and just failed immediately. Um... So they turned back and started a campfire, and uh, eventually Don did show up, and yeah. they were like, oh, we gotta go get Lois, she's so alone. Didn't make it to her on time. She was fine. She had all the food and camping stuff in her mm -hmm. in her boat, so she set up camp. She was warm. She had, like, a steak, I think. Nice. <laughs> and so she was fine. And they all got back together and continued on their merry way. They rode some rapids. They portaged some rapids where which is where you take everything completely out of the water mm -hmm. carry it past the rough stuff yeah. and then drop it back in and they lined over others which is where you tie a rope to the canoe and you're like walking it along from the shore yeah, yeah, yeah. like pulling it alongside you so of course this was the first voyage in the Colorado with two women on it. Mm -hmm. Of course there was drama. What are you talking about? <laughs> and also, it was all from Gene. <laughs> oh, no. The zoologist. He was just, like, a crybaby the whole time. He never pulled his weight. He complained all the time. And in the way that people like him do, got Lois, Don, and Bill to, like, join his clique of whining of course so that was super fun for both because alzada and norm are like the adults in the situation mm -hmm. <laughs> they're just trying to get it done very annoying so they write about that a lot in their diaries too yeah meanwhile at one point another one of the boats came loose and they had to go get it mm -hmm. and it put them off schedule and they didn't mm -hmm. really realize how much so they didn't show up at lee's ferry which was their first stop when they were supposed to. Mm. So everyone freaked out. I was like, well, I guess they all died. <laughs> so they sent out Air Force. Air Force Coast Guard. They sent out Coast Guard planes to find oh. them. And they were, like, doing, like, an excursion at this point. They didn't realize they were late, so they went to the Rainbow <laughs> Bridge, which is, like, super pretty. And this plane came by and dropped flyers. <laughs> <laughs> and the flyers said, and I quote, we are the U.S. Coast Guard plane searching for a party of six U of Michigan geologists reportedly late at Lee's Ferry. If you are they, lie down all in a row and then stand up. If in need of food, sit up. If members of party are all okay, extend arms horizontally. It is imperative that we know who you are, so identify yourself by signal first. So they did all the signals. It's us. We're all fine. We're good on food. Sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, they keep going. And on July 8th, they end up at Lee's Ferry. It, it's a part of the Grand Canyon where you can reach the Colorado from both sides. So it's a common, like, place to stop and park. But it's funny, though, because they came in and all the reporters were asleep. Mm. At 10 a.m., guys, wake up. <laughs> and so they were like, no, 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 you got to go back and come in again so we can take pictures. <laughs> so they staged another entrance. Oh. Uh... During the layover, some people got switched around. Uh, Don left because he was afraid he'd lose his job if he didn't go mm -hmm. back. They were really late. And then Jean uh, eventually got asked to leave. Ooh. And after that, the drama was way better. They, yeah. got, 
Uh, it was totally all just 100% Gene being whiny and making yeah. other people whiny with him. It was stupid. Uh, so a couple new guys came on, Lauren Bell and Del Reed, who was a prospector. <laughs> it made me happy. While they were there, they also met up with Buzz Holstrom, who was a famous Colorado River runner. Mm-hmm. And he was also famous for, like, when he heard about that they were doing this, he was like, that river's no place for a woman. They'll never make it. Mm-hmm. So they met him there at the layover in Lee's Ferry. And he was like, holy cow, you guys got really far. Here, Lois, here's my waterproof match case and compass that I used while doing the river. Aww. And they took a big photo shoot and it was all sweet. But he was like, wow, I actually believe in you guys. Second half of the expedition had a lot less exciting drama things happening. Yeah. Uh, they found a lot more specimens. They... Mm. Uh, took a lot of pictures. You, you really got to go to the links. I'm serious. Uh, there are so many pictures. There are old timey videos of them, like watching the Mexican hat float off in the distance on their first day. <laughs> like, oh shoot, there it goes. Why are you recording this? Go get it. <laughs> um, and it's all, it's super interesting. They reached Boulder Dam, and so. It was all still water from here on out, so they had a lot of rowing to do. Yeah. There were no more rapids to carry them forward. Ugh. But on August 1st, Buzz Holstrom, that guy that gave her the, the match box and the compass, mm. showed up in his big old power boat. <laughs> <laughs> Tied him up, got him on, and off they went to their final destination. I mean, it was probably like, what, five knots. Like, it should have been know. very fast. I don't know how fast 1930s powerboats are, but it's faster than rowing. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, once they got on, the 43-day voyage was complete. Woo! And when he picked them up, he grabbed Lois's helmet, Buzz did, mm. and wrote on it to the girl who proved me badly mistaken. Well written. <laughs> so that's their expedition. They got a couple of, of specimens. Uh, a lot of them are still up at U of M. Mm-hmm. Um, Alzada went directly into another expedition somewhere else. Like, yeah. she was like, okay, cool, I did it, bye, I'm off to do more. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't get as much of, an, of a collection as they were hoping for from this trip, mm-hmm. but they did discover a couple brand new species. Nice. Um, one of them is the Grand Canyon Beaver Tail Prickly Pear, Apuncia longiareolata. I got these descriptions from Chubby Plant People. Check them out. <laughs> Because I did not know how to say the Latin. Yeah. And the other one was the small flower fishhook cactus, or the Sclerocactus pariflorus. Mm. Um, they thought they discovered a lot more, but they turned out to be just like variations of species that have already been discovered. But these two, mm. brand new. And the thing is, once the dam got bigger, mm. a lot of the places that they gathered specimens from are underwater now. They just aren't there. Wow. So... You know, them doing this both was big on a women doing it for the first time point, and yeah. you can't get those specimens anymore. Yeah. So that's just super cool. She kept on teaching, eventually finally became a full-time professor, and retired to Texas in 1967. And after an active life, she died November 2nd, 1980, at the age of 83. Nice. That's Alzada. Lois, she went on to finish her PhD in Michigan. And after that, she devoted her life to raising her children, and once her husband died, she became a professor of botany at North Carolina. Very nice. Um, she did that interview and that YouTube video, and uh, she died April 30th, 2013, at the age of 99. Wow. Yeah. She was active. She was healthy. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's LZ and Lois. Awesome. I really want to uh, please check out the more info section. There's so much more that we didn't have time to talk about here. But so yeah, that's everything about Alzada and Lois, two botanist ladies, the first women across the Colorado. Awesome. So we want to thank the band The Crips for the use of their song Marie Curie for our intro and outro. Yeah. So that's going to do it for us. I'm Zachary Shock. And I'm Emily Shock. And keep flying, you beautiful steam powered horses. Marie, Marie Curie, she's a double scientist, I wanna 